Welcome back everyone, Sheepdog Smokey here, and once again, we have proof of one thing and the media goes the other way. Suspect in deadly Colorado school shooting is Trump-hating leftist. Second suspect is transitioning from female to male. One dead, eight injured. One person was killed and eight others were reportedly wounded in a shooting at a STEM school, uh, at STEM school Highlands Ranch in Colorado on Tuesday. Of course, we have the sheriff there and their story, or their tweets with the unstable situation. Police arrested the two suspects, believed to be students at the school, following the deadly attack. And the Denver Channel reported, According to a source with knowledge of the investigation, one of the suspects is an 18-year-old senior who was a student at the school. According to a criminal background check, his only prior run-ins with the law include citations for his careless driving and driving an unsafe vehicle. Late Tuesday afternoon, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office identified the 18-year-old alleged shooter, and I'm not even going to, I don't say the names. At 6.30 p.m., law enforcement officers were at a home believed to be linked to him near West Highlands Ranch Parkway and West Wildcat Reserve Parkway in Highlands Ranch. Just before 10 p.m., a car spray-painted with a message saying F Society was towed from the home. Multiple sources close to the investigation told Denver 7 late Tuesday night that the second suspect, who is a minor, is a transgender male who is in the midst of transitioning from female to male. This, and I'm not going to read all the tweets, I'm going to point a few things out. This is one, a tragedy that you're seeing liberals already begin to use to demand laws be passed that will never be obeyed by criminals. And, of course, they're ignoring two very simple facts. It is illegal in the United States for anyone under the age of 18 to purchase a pistol. It is also illegal in the United States for anyone who is 18 to walk around carrying a pistol. I can tell you, and granted, I live in Texas, uh, which currently requires a license to carry a firearm. However, if you're going to and from a shooting range, that is not required. Colorado is an open carry state, I believe constitutional open carry, but they are an open carry state as well, but that does not change the federal law that until 21, you cannot purchase a pistol and you cannot walk around with one. I grew up in the 1980s uh, in Texas, and my father did start instructing me on marksmanship and firearm safety in my teens. The number one rule was I don't touch any of them unless he's there to instruct me. Uh, then we get into the basic rules. Treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Never pointed at anything you don't want to shoot. Finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Always treat it as if it's loaded. There's no such thing as an unloaded firearm, and on and on. When we would go to any range, prior to my turning 18 for rifle and 21 for pistol, he carried them in a locked case. We then went in. He proved he was my father. We had our time at the range. He locked the case. We went home. He cleaned the weapon and secured it. I was never in possession of it unless I was firing down range. That is the only time, frankly, that a minor can or should have a firearm, unless, of course, it is in defense of their own life or their family's life. That's primarily why I was taught shotgun marksmanship, rifle marksmanship, and so on, because we lived in an area very common for coyotes and other predators. So if my father wasn't home and I was, he knew I did know how to get to the shotgun, load it, and use it to deter predators. That was the only reason I was ever to use that weapon. But here we have two teenagers who broke the law. And yet we have Buttigieg, we have Harris, we have Booker, Pelosi, Schumer, Waters, Feinstein, all of them, screaming and yelling that we need so-called common sense gun control. None of them, of course, will ever respond to the question of, they were breaking existing laws. What additional laws would have stopped them? Because, of course, that ruins the narrative that passing a law that will only ever affect law-abiding citizens, would do any good. I know I sound a bit like a broken record, but look at the city of Chicago, where gun ownership is very low among law-abiding citizens because they've disarmed them via laws. Look at the state of California, where gun ownership is very restricted, and you'll see two very high crime areas. I know friends of mine who went to California for college, others for jobs, Others just like to vacation there. And all of them have come back saying the same thing I thought when I came back from Los Angeles the two times I've visited. 
There are parks I wouldn't go in the middle of the day without armed security. Same thing for Chicago. Last time I went to Chicago, I stayed at my hotel at Dearborn, Michigan. I ate at restaurants that I could get to within a block. And I took the L train back to the airport very quickly and got out of there. Now look at cities like Fort Worth, College Station, Kennesaw, Georgia, Oklahoma City. Pretty much any major town in the South not run by Democrats. You'll find that the law-abiding citizens are not stripped of their rights or even hampered in owning a firearm. The state of Texas has several cities that have already taken advantage of a law that allows the school district to choose, to allow teachers to choose to be evaluated psychologically and take special training to then allow them to choose to carry a firearm if they wish to protect their students. There are other states that have taken this up. What you'll notice is that those schools that have the sign, some of our teachers may be armed to defend our students, are not the ones that are attacked. It's always the gun-free zone. The STEM campus in question here is described as extensive. Now, larger, so most STEM programs are the larger schools. We have one here in my hometown. It is larger than any of the other middle schools because they need more space. They typically have, I believe, about the same number of students in all three of the middle schools, but the STEM campus is larger because they do need more computer space, more art space, music space, everything, because they are doing far more in the physical, tangible instruction than the intangible, such as lectures and so on. So, this campus is very extensive. From all I've read, there was one security guard there. One. For the entire campus. In my mind, that's the same as the officers at Parkland cowering outside. That guard went looking, found, and ultimately, I believe, was able to bring the situation under control. But just imagine if those teachers had been allowed to choose. I can tell you from personal experience, going from first grade, actually kindergarten, all the way through <clears throat> my senior year of high school, it's about a 50-50 spread. About half of my teachers would have chosen to carry. The other half would not have. And it's very simple. It's a choice. And ironically, it's a choice that even if not exercised, uh, puts a question into anyone's mind. Another good uh, point that was brought up, when we look at Sandy Hook, the police didn't arrive near fast enough because, of course, they're not on site 24-7. They have to respond. The shooter, finding the doors locked, had time to hammer away at a reinforced window until he got in. Had the principal been allowed to choose to carry a firearm, that principal could have dealt with it at the door, mitigated the entire thing. But this is the crux of the matter. Democrats know. Liberals know that as long as we, law-abiding citizens, are allowed to exercise our Second Amendment rights, a tyrant government will never be able to take control. We see many tyrannies within cities like New York City, Chicago, L.A., where citizens are so restricted in virtually all of their rights, unless they're the right kind, then they can scream and yell and assault you with impunity. But they're so restricted in their Second Amendment rights that people are scared to go places. Schools are virtual army bases, because they have to be. And this is not right. I can clearly remember when I would go with my father to the high school to either take something to my sister or pick her up if her car was not working. Multiple pickup trucks had a shotgun or rifle in the gun rack. And granted, yes, this was over 20 years ago. I can tell you probably most of those vehicles were not locked. Some of them were likely teacher's vehicles. Others were student vehicles. We didn't have problems like this because anyone intending harm in the areas where I've grown up knows that there is an extremely good chance that their intended victim is likely armed and able to defend themselves. Criminals prey on the weak, unarmed victim. They don't want a fight. They don't want 
the possibility that their intended victim could stand up and stop them. They go after people who have no chance so that they can control the victim or just outright kill them and then go on with their criminal activity. And it needs to stop. The demonization of the NRA for actions of people that would never, one, never join the NRA and would find the NRA's membership so abhorrent to them because we are not hateful, bigoted, spiteful, racist people. And the NRA stands openly against criminals. These two children <clears throat> became felons the instant they picked up and walked around with that firearm. If they purchased it, that's a second strike. The problem we have is not the laws. It is not necessarily just enforcement of the law. That's what people like Swalwell or Booker would have you believe as they go on rambling tirades about how they're going to ban and buy back, and if you don't cooperate, you'll be in jail. And their sycophants love it. The problem is a broken enforcement system. Now, if these two teenagers tried to buy a firearm from any licensed dealer, they would have been told no because of their age. The background check never, never even run because the sale would not be allowed. But when we look at others, such as Sutherland Springs, had the NICS system been properly maintained and used, and had the U.S. Air Force properly notified the correct authorities that that shooter was dishonorably discharged, he would have been a prohibited possessor in the state of Texas, never allowed to purchase a firearm. But again, the gun control crowd doesn't want the right solutions. They want total disarmament. And just in case you want to see what a country that's been totally disarmed looks like, look to Venezuela. They were disarmed just about 10 years ago. And now they're having to rise up against a socialist dictator who's had the meeting out of the garbage for months. It, it, it's not even a... It's a non-starter on the discussion for me. An armed society is a polite society. Now, I'm not the Wild West 2A supporter. I don't say anyone and everyone who wants to should walk around with a gun. In fact, many of the old town sheriffs felt the same as I do. When someone proved that they are incapable of coexisting in society peaceably, they were run out of town on a rail. Today, we can't really do that. But if you prove you're a violent sociopath, if you're a multiple, if you're a felon, convicted of drug abuse, so on and so forth, you lose your rights to do a lot of things. But for those of us who have existed on this planet for multiple years, in my case, decades, never had more than an, a very insignificant parking ticket, why is it I should pay for the actions of criminals? I am certified to be a teacher, secondary social studies. Unfortunately, coaches are the only ones who get that, those jobs. But was a, were I able to find work and were I asked, would you like to go through the psychological train, or screening and training to carry a firearm so you may be able to defend our students, I would answer in a heartbeat, yes. And uh, that's the end of it. But I've talked long enough. Let me know what you think. Keep the comments civil, as always. We do not learn from argument. We learn from debate. Also, please make sure to like, share, and comment on this video, as well as to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're the first to know of any new content as it is posted. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.